This is flipped lecture number 24D, and I'm going to finish night section 10.2. So I already showed in night section 10.2 that the gravitational potential energy is mgy, where y is just the height of the particle in your coordinate system. And in class, we discussed how arbitrary that is because where you measure the base of your coordinate system, whether it be the floor or the ceiling or something in between, changes what you mean by the potential energy. And we resolved and understood that. The derivation of that wasn't as uh, general as I would like. And so now I'm going to give you the general derivation. So here you are at a hut. You're at a hut in the Sierras, and you're about to take a windy path climbing up between these two hills to this lake that's back here. And uh, let's say your hut is at an elevation of 1,000 meters, and let's say that your lake that you're trying to get up to is at an elevation of 1,800 meters. And if that formula u equals mgy is right, and let's say u weigh 50 kilos, and let's round gravity to just be 10 meters per second squared, then 1800 minus 1000 times 50 times 10, which is 800 times 50 times 10, 5 times 8 is 40, Two, three, four more zeros. Looks like you'll have to do 400,000 joules of work to lift yourself up to there. Or, correspondingly, the gravitational field is going to do negative 400,000 joules of work. But it looks like you're taking a circuitous path here. And so the proof I gave that that's the change in the potential energy is not enough. So let's do a little better proof. Suppose I make the path a bunch of little tiny paths, which is actually the definition of the work. The work is the sum, i equals 0 to n minus 1, of the force of gravity dot delta r and this is the force of gravity at the point i on the path, and this is the displacement i on the path. And so the path is chopped up into a bunch of little tiny paths. And we label each of those tiny paths with the index i, and so this might be the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I number from zero, this is delta r sub 6. And then the gravity here is I go from along this little displacement, of course, is fg is equal to mg in the downward direction. Now we can write delta r sub 6 a little bit more fancily. Delta r sub 6 is however much I moved in the x direction in the sixth time segment times the unit vector in the x direction, plus however I move, much I moved in the y direction on displacement 6 times the unit vector in the j direction, plus however I much I moved in the z direction uh, 6 times k hat. And here my coordinate system is i to the right j up, and k is coming out of the board at you, which we could draw with a dot like that. Um, this is your x, y, and z directions. So uh, as I'm receding into this plane, it looks like my in this, my z coordinate is getting more and more negative. My y coordinate is getting higher and higher. And my x coordinate seems to be, thanks to these switchbacks, is going back and forth. 
So let's write, using that same notation, let's write f sub g. f sub g is mg in the downward direction, which in this coordinate system is minus mg times j hat. Now it's our job to calculate the work to dot this into this. Of course, this never changes. Fg, wherever you are on this path, is down, so I didn't need a little sub 6 here or a little sub 6 on the right side. This is just f sub g. So f sub g dotted into this, well, j hat dot i hat is 0, j hat dot j hat is 1, and j hat dot k hat is 0. So the only term I pick up when I dot f sub g into delta r is minus mg delta y sub 6. Okay, so for this example here, my little bit of work done in the sec sixth path segment is minus mg delta y sub 6. Well, that makes this sum a whole load easier. Because this is true for any of the path segments, I just use 6 to make it a nice easy example. For all the delta y, all the path segments, I, the little bit of work done on path segment I is just delta Y sub I. Okay, so that's pretty easy. That means that this sum here simplifies. This becomes sum I equals zero to N minus one of minus MG delta Y sub I. Now delta Y sub I is y at i plus 1 minus y at i. Delta y sub i is y at i plus 1 minus y at i. So what you can see here is you do the sum, let's just kind of write it out, okay? Let's write out the zeroth term. The zeroth term is y1 minus y0. The first term that I'm supposed to add into this is plus y 2 minus y1. The second term is plus y3 minus y2. And plus dot 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 plus the last term is yn minus yn minus 1. And of course this entire thing is multiplied by minus mg. So I've just written out what this sum means. And now you've got a nice fact. See the y1 here? That cancels with the y1 there. See the y2 there? That cancels with the y2 there. And that's just a cancellation is going to keep up all the way till you get to the yn minus 1, which is going to cancel with the yn minus 1 in the preceding term. And all you're left with, with all those cancellations, is minus mg times y sub n minus y sub 0. Which, of course, is what is the whole change in elevation. So let's summarize that. We have shown that the work done by gravity, which if you're going up, it's negative. The work done by gravity is delta W is equal to minus mg times y final minus y initial. And it doesn't matter whether what path you take. You could take some other path. Maybe you could loft in a hot air balloon up, up to here. And then, uh, I don't know, get fired in a cannon horizontally over to the lake. Doesn't matter what path you take to get from here to here. The amount of work done by gravity total is minus mg times the final height minus the initial height. And this is the fundamental justification for saying that u, which is equal to minus uh, w, is mg y final minus y initial. Notice that minus sign in the delta u formula cancels with that minus sign there. And that's our justification for saying that u is equal to mg y. So that's the end of 10.2. 10.3 is on the potential energy in springs.